In this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to replace a broken door jamb, including how to replace the door strike plate. As you can see, this one's very, very loose. Also, how to replace that deadbolt plate. This one has a bunch of cracks, so we might as well replace it to a brand new one. So, stay tuned. Welcome to Fix This House. If you're new to the channel, please consider pressing the subscribe and notification bell so you can always be in tune on DIYs, how-to videos, and product reviews that I do within this channel. On this episode, you can see that my door jam, the left side with all the strike plates and the plates that are attached with the deadbolt are all wearing out. It has a bunch of stress marks, a bunch of um, cracks on one side including the upper area but we're only going to change one side okay so the very first thing that we need to do is take out all the weather stripping if yours doesn't have weather stripping then you're clear to for this step but we'll take off the weather stripping in this case i'm just taking out the whole thing of all around this door jam and i'm just going to replace it with a brand new one so just carefully take it out and now we're going to be taking off all the hardware take off the deadbolt hardware and we're also going to take off the door uh, strike plate hardware and make sure that after you take all this hardware off make sure you save all these pieces if not you can just buy a brand new one but why brand buy brand new when you can save these old ones and we'll use, reuse it for later we're also going to save these uh all these other locks and latches and i'm going to be taking off the security sensor now we're gonna pry off the old one. You can see this one is just very easy to take off because it already has cracks on it. And we're, I'm just using my um, screwdriver, which probably isn't the best tool, but we'll use uh, the proper tool, which is the pry bar. I'm just using my rubber hammer and my pry bar to knock this one side of my door jam. I'm knocking out to one side because I don't wanna take out the door casing, as you can see on the outside. So I'm going to save myself an extra step and just knock it off from the side. Now, depending on what door jam you have, yours might be secured to your framing with nails. So now I'm just going to be using my handheld hacksaw. Now you can use this method, but it might take a little longer. It might take a little while for you to take off all those nails, depending on how many you have. So to make the job a little bit faster, I'm going to be using my cobalt reciprocating saw with a bit that is designed to cut nails or any type of metal. Now be very, very careful while using this and also all the tools that I use in this video, I'll leave it in the description down below. As you can see, it cuts like butter. It made my job a little bit faster. I'm trying to see if I can pry off that door uh, stop right there, that little piece of wood strips, if I can reuse it. But unfortunately, I don't think I can because it's starting to actually tear apart. So make sure that you vacuum and clean out all the voids. In this case, I'm cleaning out this half inch void inside of my door jam uh, the past owner who installed this actually put door shims to fill in those gaps but i'm just gonna fill it in with solid wood okay half inch wood that i'm just cutting with my table saw Now that I have that cut, I'm just going to place it in. So this is going to act as my filler and I'm just going to screw it in. Make sure that you drill pilot holes first before you actually nail in the screws because if you don't, you end up probably cracking the wood. What I'm using here is a two and a half inch screws, general purpose wood screws and just screwing it from top to bottom, middle. And I'm also going to be attaching a top piece because I didn't have any, you know, a whole piece I can do with this. So I'm just using my scrap pieces just to save material. Okay, so the final piece that I'll be doing is that middle part, securing that final filler piece. Again, it doesn't have to look good, but make sure that it is nice and flushed with your drywall and the outside sidings. There you have it. It is finally installed. Now it's time to measure out for the door jam itself. Now this is the old door jam. As you can see, I, we tried to save this side, this door stop right here, the wooden door stop, but it's not gonna work. So I went to Lowe's and I got this um, two pieces of wood. This one is a half inch. Now this one does have a notch um, cut already into it, just like what you see there. If you don't have one, it's very easy to do. You're just gonna use your circular saw or any type of saw to cut that notch out. But this one, we're not gonna need that notch because it's just a direct replacement. I'm using my square to measure up my measurement and just using my um, miter saw to cut off the excess. Okay, just like that, I don't need that notch. Now we're gonna test fit it 
onto that one side of my door jam. As you can see, it fits perfectly. Just tap it in with your rubber mallet, and then we're gonna secure it with two and a half inch, two and a half inch wood screws. Okay, we're gonna drill the pilot holes first. Very important to prevent your wood from cracking. And then we're just gonna screw in those nails. And then we're gonna secure it from the middle as well. Again, drill your pilot holes, very important. As you can see that I'm actually drilling it right onto the middle area where the door wood, the wooden door stop is going to be placed on top of it. So it's going to be hidden. Place the screws on the top, one in the bottom and two in the middle. So it makes it total of four. Now we're going to measure out for that wooden door stop to match the top frame. As you can see, this one is a half inch. Now I got my measurement, drew out my line using my square and now we're just going to cut it off with my miter saw and there you see on this one you can see that there is a weather strip channel right there this one's already made from the factory and it's, it goes a half inch deep as you can see this one that we bought does not have it so we're going to have to make our own so not a lot of people show you this but i will so this one we're going to make a notch right there using our table saw okay so this is going to be half inch going in and it's going to be about a quarter inch down. So depending on what you have, make sure you measure it before you cut it. We're going to set our depth on our table saw onto half inch deep. Just like what you see there. And we're going to adjust it so that it sits perfectly on our mark. I'll be very, very careful cutting this. First, I'm just using a test piece to make sure that it is nice and where I want it. Don't use it on your first initial piece. Use a scrap piece first before doing it to your final one. And test fit your weather stripping. See if it fits on through that channel. Like what you see here, this one per fits perfectly. It just snaps right in and it works good. So now that it works really well, we're going to use it now and cut the initial piece that we're using. Now again, be very, very careful. Take your time and make sure that you use the proper tools to feed this through because it is, you know, very, very dangerous. If you slip, you might end up cutting yourself. As you can see, I'm using all these tools to prevent my hands from getting cut. Okay, so take your time. And as you can see, it is cut right there. Now we have the channels for the weather stripping. Make sure that it aligns up to the existing uh, doorstop wooden area right there which fits perfect now i'm using my brad nailer this one is the nail force by works so this is going to be an 18 gauge brad nails that i'll be using two inches i love this thing it is super nice it is it's not loud and it's just super handy i'm just going to brad nail the top portion because it does it is loose and i'm going to brad nail the the sidings right here now this one's okay because the initial one we screwed it on so it's protected because that's the initial the, this is just pretty much just to stop the door from swinging out to the other side and i placed about six brad nails on this to attach it to the stud very very important make sure you put your weather strip first before you measure out for your uh, your door knob holes so this because because if you don't put this first, you're going to end up pushing this door further out and you're going to be marking the holes way too far and you're not going to gauge it right. So here's a little trick. Make sure that you use your mechanical pencil and make sure you put out the lead as far as it can go, just like what you see here. So I, so you can actually reach between there and actually trace out that, you know, where the door knob is going to hit that strike and trace it out also on the where the deadbolt um is going to be you know hitting on where it's going to go through that hole that you'll be making later with you with that method you can see that you can actually draw it out a lot better more accurate so you don't make a mistake when because you only got one try of doing this and you, you don't you can't afford to make a mistake on this one okay so now flip over your door strike and then just trace it out where it's going to be hitting as you can see here i'm just tracing out every single thing that i can trace out of where i'm going to be making those cuts all right, so this one is gonna be my 5.8 spade bit. So it's very easy to use. Just attach it with your um, impact drill. And this one, you're gonna be drilling a shallow one. You don't have to go through all the way through because this one is not the deadbolt one. The deadbolt, you have to go all the way through. This one's just gonna be for your regular door. Now I'm gonna be using my half inch chisel. Okay, and then we're just gonna chisel out the rest. 
now with your tracements the trait now with all the tracing that you did make sure you just do a cutout take your time this is actually a very fun part doing this part but i'm just doing it in a fast motion for your friends because it will take a while if i did it on regular speed Make sure you dry fit your door strike up against to see if it fits right well. And then we're going to trace out the door strike frame once again. I'm going to make it a little bit darker because I can see where I'm actually going to be cutting. Now you can use a chisel to take this out. But in this case, I'm just going to be using my works oscillating tool. Now this is very handy. Again, if you're not comfortable using this, um, just use the regular chisel. But this one, if you're very confident in using then use an oscillating tool you're only going to be going about about 1 16th deep pretty much the thickness of your door strike just be very very careful you don't go too far in now this takes a lot of careful um steady hand handling so if you're not comfortable again with using this just use your chisel and you can see how faster this is and a lot more accurate if you have the steady hand now just place your door strike on there and it should sit flush. Now we're going to be using again our 332 uh, drill bit. Go ahead and right through there. Make sure you drill pilot holes first. If you don't do this, you're going to end up cracking the wood. And then we're going to place on our hardware which came with the door strike. Now the same thing we're going to do with the door um, deadbolt right here. This one went all the way deep because it has a longer um, arm that goes through there. So just repeat the process as you did with the door strike. Should be easy. And again, I'm just using my chisel now. I'm not using my oscillating tool for this because it is restract, you know, right on the middle. Okay, so if you found this video helpful, please hit that big thumbs up, subscribe, and notification bell, friends, so you can always be in tune on DIYs, how-to videos, and product reviews that are doing within this channel. I hope you found this very helpful and how easy it is you can replace your broken door jam. I'll see you next time.